This is Twit. Last week's discussion of the persistence of unencrypted email in transit and the fact that some 3.3 million email servers worldwide, most of them located in the United States, are still not bothering to offer a TLS certificate that would allow for email encryption triggered a lot of feedback from our listeners. Um, so yeah, I'm going to share some of it and we're going to talk about it because it's interesting. Um, Philip Peterson said, Steve, after your piece on the non-use of TLS for SMTP, I looked at some of the email I've received. I thought it might be small businesses that had not set up certificates, but found it to be large companies as well. The most troublesome one I found is that treasurydirect.gov sends their one-time password notifications in the clear. It also seems like organizations with multiple email servers don't all have them set up for TLS. ID.me sends the welcome to ID.me message from a non-TLS server, although the other messages sent while setting up an account he says, parens, to log into irs.gov, we're using TLS. Regards, Phil. So Philip's note is interesting because it hints at something I want to discuss in greater detail after I share another piece of feedback. But here's the part that's interesting. Philip wrote, the most troublesome one I found is that treasurydirect.gov sends their one-time password notifications in the clear. What's tricky about diagnosing email's use of TLS encrypted connections is that it mirrors today's web browsing where the connecting to server is the one that's offering to prove its identity to its caller. So in the case of email, it's not the sending SMTP server that offers its TLS certificate. It's the SMTP server on the receiving end that does so. So a sending SMTP server would always have the choice of refusing to send email to any recipient SMTP server that wasn't offering to prove its identity with a TLS certificate and encrypt their conversation and any received email with a TLS connection. But otherwise, whether or not a sending server is able to protect the email it wishes to send is up to the receiving server. Either the sender or the receiver might elect to not send or receive messages over an unencrypted connection, but it's only the receiving server that's able to offer the use of encryption for both sides to then enjoy. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Security Now. If you want the whole show, you can get it at our website, twit.tv slash SN. Of course, you can subscribe to Security Now on your favorite podcast, or just click one of the links below. Security Now.